we thank all of you for your testimony. Absolutely um, fascinating and, uh, and central. It, this is the most exciting, least glamorous hearing that is going to be conducted uh, in the Congress this year. Uh, but like many other non-glamorous um, uh, uh, subjects, he, the, herein lies the truth uh, uh, that uh, will create the path uh, to uh, saving the planet and reducing dramatically the amount of energy. And again, we turn to California for the formula. You know, back in 1962, the Beach Boys in Surf City, they, they had a two-for-one formula to do, at, which is at Surf City, there were two girls for every boy. And that was a, <laughs> and that for, that for someone in a blue-collar town in Malden, Massachusetts, that was a dream in California. <laughs> They'd almost seemed too good to be true. And it turns out, it was too good to be true. It never did exist there or any place else. However, here, the new two-for-one rule coming out of California and Massachusetts uh, and out of New York, for every dollar you invest in energy efficiency, you get back two additional dollars. Kind of a miracle, huh? No, not a miracle. Just what my mother used to say. My mother used to say, Eddie, always try to work smarter, not harder. She would say that immediately, immediately before she said, Eddie, I'm donating your brain to Harvard Medical School as a completely unused human organ. Uh, and that was because, you know, I wasn't thinking smarter. Now, we have many utilities in many uh, uh, states whose brains collectively should be donated to Harvard Medical School because this is obviously the way to go. Uh, it, it's proven. It's a moneymaker. Uh, and yet people still resist it. Why? Because it's not the way they've done business in the past. And so this is a tremendous um, opportunity for us. We saw in the telecommunications revolution that we could go from the 1996 Telecommunications Act, where not one single home had broadband, not one home in America, 1996. But once we got that policy right on a national level, we moved to a point where now, 11 years later, 12 years later, broadband is almost ubiquitous in its deployment. Companies like Amazon, Google, YouTube didn't even exist three years ago, but only possible because we got the policy right, revolutionizing uh, these issues. And so that same kind of technological uh, revolution is possible here in the energy sector as well. It's all there. As Mr. Klein said, the technologies are already there. They're ready to go. But we need the will and the political policies put in place so that we unleash this revolution in a way that isn't just isolated to individual utilities, individual states, but the, that the United States is the leader, looking over its shoulder at number two and three and four in the world as we export these products, export these ideas all around the planet. And so that's what this hearing really represents to me, because in a lot of ways, efficiency is the whole key to solving the problem of global warming to reducing our energy dependence and, and this is hard to believe, creating the new major economic uh, driver in our whole society, the job creator, the way in which we kind of revolutionize the way in which we look at these issues. Now, it was hard for the telephone companies to change. You know, AT&T had 1.2 million employees. We all still had our black rotary dial phone. Why would you want to change? It's working out great. Each one of you is renting for $3 a month every single month for your whole life a black rotary dial phone. That's a good business. And the utilities, you know, loved it. And the regulators let them get away with it. My mother paid $1,200 for that, renting it for 40 years, a black rotary dial phone. But no innovation, no new phones, no new devices, no Google, no Amazon, no YouTube. You know, but yet you could always dial that, that phone, huh? Well, that's what we're still doing in energy, huh? That's what we're still doing. We're still relying upon old ways of generating electricity. And so who would have thought that in the old days, when you got on the phone and somebody called from another state, you know, your grandmother was calling in, did hand around the phone saying, you got to talk fast, it's long distance. Because it was going to be so expensive, huh? And AT&T made so much money on the long distance call. Now, you talk long distance like you're talking across the street. Because through new technology and new ways of looking at the issue, we lowered the price dramatically. All that happened in one technological generation. We're going to be able to do the same thing here in energy efficiency. 
And it is going to become the new source, the major engine for economic growth in the United States in the next generation. Millions of jobs, economic growth, export opportunities, far. Your insights are valuable. We need to get you more allies in this fight. But uh, I think ultimately the truth of your testimony will set the Congress free, and, and we will be able uh, to pass the legislation uh, before Copenhagen in December of 2009 uh, that will make it possible for us to see this revolution in all of its full power. We thank you for the leadership you have shown. This hearing is adjourned.